Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're answering a question from um, Rod, uh, VK4EZY, EZ. Uh, that's Australia. And uh, let's see, he is building a dummy load. A dummy load is a very handy thing. Let me show you mine. This is a Heathkit Cantenna dummy load. It consists of a very large, non-inductive, 50 ohm resistor immersed in mineral oil. And uh, you get to it right here. And uh, the mineral oil helps it dissipate the heat. This thing can take, let's see what we've got here, um, 200 watts indefinitely, up to 1,000 watts intermittently. Now, a dummy load for something with uh, less power can be much, much smaller. Uh, let's just, again, remind ourselves what a dummy load is. It's a resistor. Okay, R equals 50 ohms. All right. And then you attach your transmitter here, and this will dissipate all the RF as heat. And since it's 50 ohms and not inductive or capacitive, then this will be an SWR of 1 to 1. So this is very handy if you're testing something, having trouble with something, or for some reason wanting to transmit like you're trying to adjust the controls, get the screen just the way you want it, and so on. Meanwhile, you're transmitting into a dummy load. So you're not very much. I mean, you'll pick up a little bit of this a little ways away, but by and large, it's all dissipated in here. Now, what he has done is get 10 500-ohm resistors. Let's see, he's got... Uh, 500 ohm resistors. So you remember your training. If you put resistors in parallel, these are each 500 ohms. Okay. Now, 500, what you're going to do is you're, they're equal. So you end up dividing by 10. The formula is 1 over uh, 1 over R plus 1 over R plus 1 over R. Okay, now that's 50. So this is uh, 0 0.02. No. Pardon me for a second. So this is 0 0.02. Okay, for 1 over R, there's 10 of these. There's 10 of those. Okay, so that would give you 0.2 for the denominator over 1. If you divide 0.2 into 1, let's see here, we take 0.2, we take 1 divided by 0.2, this is 5. Oh, these are 500 ohm resistors. How stupid of me. Okay, so these are 500 ohm, 1 over 500. 1 divided by 500 is 0 0.002. Okay, so we can start here. This is 500. This is 500, and so on. All in parallel. So we've got 1 over R plus 1 over R, it's the same R, and 1 over 500 is 0 0.002, okay? So you take the 0 0.002 
and multiply it by 10, and you've got 0.02 for the denominator. Now that's over 1, like this, and that equals 50. So by putting a bunch of resistors in series, the resistance comes down to 50 ohms. The heat dissipated by each of these is one-tenth of the heat uh, dissipated by the whole thing. So with somewhat smaller resistors, um, they're a little less expensive than a great big non-inductive 50 ohm uh, resistor. You can put 10 in series and get what you are uh, looking for, which is what he has done. Now, he has a question. What to do with the heat? Okay, so you've got this dummy load, and let's just call it a black box here. R load, which is 50 ohms. Okay, and he wants to get the heat away from this so that it can withstand a greater amount of heat. And what is the best way to do that? Okay, there are lots of ways. One is to just put heat sinks on the resistors. So uh, these resistors are in um, TO220 cans, which is a small little thing about like that. Um, and you can purchase uh, heat dissipation uh, little things, little heat sinks that you can put over these. Now the question is, at what point is that insufficient? Okay, if a um, dummy load um, is dry, okay, it can dissipate X amount of heat. And the heat can be measured in watts. Okay, now in order to get something like this that's a dry dummy load to dissipate more heat, you need to immerse it in something that will carry the heat away. One thing to do is fan. Put a fan on it, okay, to push the air across that thing. And you can buy so-called dry dummy loads from MFJ, uh, from GX Engineering and so on. Or um, you can go further and immerse this in a non-conducting fluid. Okay, non-conducting fluid. Now there are several types of non-conducting fluid. The most common used by utilities is so-called transformer oil. Now back when I was a young ham, transformer oil had an, um, polyphenol something chlorides in them. And as it turns out, it was not as benign as people thought it would be. Okay. So they had to change to a different type of transformer oil. The problem is getting your hands on it. Um, you could go to your electrical utility and beg. And that's really about the only thing you can do. I mean, they buy this stuff by the 50-gallon drum. And you say you only want a quarter of a gallon or something like that. They might just give it to you. The other thing to do is mineral oil. Mineral oil is used medicinally as a laxative because it is not absorbed by the body, therefore it goes all the way through. Um, it's also totally inert, um, and you can put the mineral. Now, the transformer oil will give you a little better heat dissipation, but the mineral oil comes close and is far more available. You might be able to buy it by the gallon at your local home improvement store. Or you can go to the drugstore and buy it by the quart. 
And that's what I did to fill mine. Now, one thing about mineral oil I want to tell you about that, uh, first of all, you've got to put this in a totally sealed container because you don't want this stuff to get out and over everything. The problem with mineral oil is its major benefit. It doesn't degrade. So if you spill it, it's there forever. Okay, it has very low volatility, meaning it evaporates very, very slowly. Okay, now, one other problem with mineral oil. It's called creep. Okay, here's your paint can or whatever. You've put a your resistor assembly down in here and you've got an SO239 right there that's maybe just a pass through okay right in the middle of that and you you push this paint can lid down tight just like you would uh, on anything else you leave a little bit of air in there for expansion okay the mineral oil even though that's a tight seal the mineral oil creeps through the seal and out the other side. So if you'll notice my dummy load, which is filled with mineral oil. Let's see if this thing will focus on it. Yes. Okay. On the top here, look at this. That's mineral oil with dust. Now, this thing is dust, cat hair, you name it. So you'll have to keep it clean to keep it where it needs to be. But it will get up on the lid, and so you'll periodically have to clean it. Now, that mineral oil is not coming out of nowhere. So every several years, you're going to need to pop the top and add a little more mineral oil in, okay? I don't know if uh, transformer oil has a similar, similar creep problem. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Okay, uh, so you've got several options. Completely dry, dry with a fan, and uh, immerse in mineral oil or trans, uh, uh, transformer oil or actually put heat fins on this thing and a little circulating pump to circulate the mineral oil through that like that. Now they do that on real transformers okay you'll often look at transformers and see they have a radiator off to the side that's what's going on here they may or may not have pumps in them. They may do it convectively. Okay. But the thing is, as an amateur radio operator, you won't need something that exotic. You may run across them, though, from time to time. Now, if you do run across a uh, dummy load at a ham fest or something like that, make sure it's a 50-ohm dummy load. Because they're also made at 75 ohms, 33 ohms, they're made 100 ohms, they're made all different impedances for different applications. In this case, you want 50 ohms. That's what you want for your dummy load. Okay, so I think that answers your question, Rod. Uh, thank you very much for sending in your uh, question. And uh, for all of you, if you have a desire to support this channel financially, you can certainly do so. If you go to decastlercom slash support, it shows several different ways uh, from a simple tip one time to recurring tips. There's a link there to Patreon uh, and so on. And uh, there's also a subscriber uh, thing set up through uh, um, uh, PayPal uh, that takes less of a percentage. So there you have it, and until we next meet, 73.